Hey guys, today I'm going to introduce you to Mississippian country music musician and performer extraordinaire, Marty Stewart. Come along with us. Let's go explore. From his boyhood days performing here in Philadelphia, Marty displays singular zest for every flavor of country music. That's how this country music trail marker starts out anyway. Marty was born here in Philadelphia on September 30th, 1958. From a very early age, he was an incredible instrumental musician. As a teenager, he played his mandolin for Lester Flatt. And as the sign says, he became a grand old Opry star and a hill hillbilly rock hit maker. Marty is a very accomplished songwriter and an incredible country artifact collector, but we'll get to more of that in just a bit. Marty was 10 when he was with the Musical Rangers. They were a honky-tonk guitar band that at times played around the square here in Philadelphia. Marty speaks of Neshoba County like I do the state of Mississippi. He has often noted that country rock, gospel blues, and Choctaw musical streams converged in Neshoba County and formed a rich pool of inspiration from which any creative person could draw from. Marty Stewart was not quite 14 years old when on Labor Day in 1972, when he left Philadelphia to join Lester Flatt in Nashville. He remained with Flatt until Lester's death in 1979. After Lester Flatt, Stewart worked with Vassar Clements and Doc Watson, but from 1980 to 85, he was an electric guitar player in Johnny Cash's backup band. Marty Stewart is a 15-time Grammy nominee and a five-time Grammy Award winner. When everything out here ain't what it seems, when I'm down to nothing, I just go ahead and dream and face the fact that I'm a circle in a world full of squares, trading sorrows for tomorrows. Now that's the hobo prayer. Inside the Philadelphia Visitor Center, you're greeted by Marty Stewart display. This, of course, would be one of his guitars and the hobo prayer. And another quote about dreaming, about loving to hear the sound of the locomotives that would come behind his home. Here in Philadelphia, he says, it was my dream to get on one of those trains with my guitar and ride it all around the world. Since I've left home, I've always lived within listening distance of a railroad. When my traveling days are through, I'll come back to Philadelphia on a train. Folks, if you like this kind of content, give us a little boop on that like button. Stewart first laid eyes on the fabulous country music vocalist Connie Smith when she rolled through Philadelphia in 1970. They married 27 years later and have proven to be great songwriting collaborators as well. Stewart has always worked really hard to celebrate the rich cultural heritage of country music. He is establishing a country music museum and performing arts center in Philadelphia. And according to the Congress's website, this is a tribute to the culture and the rural ethics of America. I want to encourage you to stroll on over to the Congress of Country Music org and check them out. When this place opens in another year or so, we'll have to go back and do a video. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the life and career of Marty Stewart and his efforts to celebrate our rich cultural heritage. He is truly the president of country music. Thank you.